episode 118, Tips for Creating a Capsule Wardrobe You'll Love for Years. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And today we are talking about having less clothes, fewer clothes, not on your person, but in your closet. <laughs> I mean, but either way, he, I mean, you depending do on you, the climate, I guess it's yes. really hot in Florida. So a lot of a lot of the clothes here are smaller. I don't yeah. know if that's a good thing. How, <laughs> how to do this thing of less less clothing in your closet less yeah. clothing choices capsule wardrobe it's a big topic everybody's got their take on it here you go we're gonna throw ours in the mix exactly we both have had capsule wardrobes uh in different forms for the past several years and so we're going to talk about that and how to make it work for you but first our sponsors today's episode is brought to you by the frugal friends workbook <laughs> We are so excited to share this with you in just two short weeks. Ah, uh, We should probably finish it. Um, We've always worked to promote healthy conversations about money. And those don't have to start with telling people how much debt you have or what's in your 401k or what it's invested in. The Frugal Friends Workbook helps you start to have healthy money conversations with challenges and questions designed to help you open up about money but also change some habits. So it's that launching pad and it launches August 7th. So if you want that buy now button in your inbox on launch day, go to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash workbook and you can get on the wait list. This is real stuff now because this is like accountability that we've got to get it out. Yes. Got to finish it. Also brought to you by... Less is more. When it comes to garlic knots, pasta, and donuts, this couldn't be further from the truth. But Mm, our sponsor wants us to know that sometimes having less of something provides space for more of something else. Kind of like less complaining leads to more joy. You're welcome, parents. Make sure your kids listen to that. Less is more. Only true for some things in life. Mm, Yeah. Garlic knots. More is always more. It's funny. I started to write something that I thought most people would want to say, like, less is more except for with chocolate. And I'm like, but that's not exactly like I eat one piece of chocolate. I'm happy. I'm like salty, buttery, garlicky, carby. Mm -hmm. Bring it on. Thank you. You get me. I get you. (laughs) That's why we're friends. (laughs) Yes. And the more carbs you eat, the faster you'll have to buy new clothes. So let's dive into our first article. Thank you. You're, yes. I, I see that look on your face. <laughs> I'm just like not understanding, but going with it. I'm on. I'm along for the ride. If you have had a baby, you understand. It's I'm still working on getting back into my pre-pregnancy clothes. Like Which I is hate why... people that just get there without Ugh. trying. But it's why a capsule wardrobe could help so that you don't have to buy as many clothes to keep up with (laughs) your carb intake. I know I'm about to give up and just like go out and buy new clothes like I'm done with like body shame guilt. So I'm excited for today's second article specifically. But the first one is from Courtney Carver and we had her on the show um, a while ago. I should have looked up the the name or the number, but we, we had her talking about minimalism and this is her article on how to build a capsule wardrobe because she actually created project three, three, three. And that is all about having 33 items and using only those for three months. And so to me, that's a little like more extreme than a capsule wardrobe, uh, but still a cool challenge to try if you want to. Yeah. I like, first of all, this specific article that we're talking about today and that we're sharing in our show notes goes through how to 
how to build a capsule wardrobe, not necessarily what you're going to have in it, but the process of it. But I also like how she goes into some definitions and some reasons for doing this. Um, and my own abbreviated version of a definition of a capsule wardrobe is just a small collection of useful clothing that you love. Like at its core, that's what it is. Certainly, there's all sorts of people who go into different numbers of how many clothing, what type of clothing, what exactly are the pieces and articles of clothing, whether whether you're doing seasonal or if it's just all year, this number of clothing needs to last you. Like there's all sorts of approaches. But yeah. at its core, we are talking about a small collection, useful, meaning like it's functional and it hopefully there's some long longevity to it. And you really like the clothing rather than having 25, you know, different types of the same article of clothing. None of them really work for you. We're talking, we've pared it down. These are the clothes that work for us and that we love. Yes. And I found the episode that Courtney was on. It's episode 59. Perfect. So, yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's start with her top three reasons to build a capsule wardrobe. Yes. Um, so the first one is to figure out what matters. I love, I love all three of these reasons, especially number two. Um, so she says, if you're overwhelmed with stuff and busyness, you may have forgotten what really matters to you, um, how you like to spend your time and the dreams you had for your life. Uh, living and dressing with less helps you reconnect and remember uh, sometimes f to figure out what matters, you have to get rid of everything that doesn't. Mm. So true. And we say the same thing with spending. So like when we do no spend challenges, sometimes you have to get rid of everything to remember or to realize what really matters, what you really value uh, spending money on. It's the same with clothes. Yeah, I think it it clears the clutter, so to speak, like physically and metaphorically to kind of gain a new perspective, similar to what I think vacations can do for us. Sometimes we wonder why are vacations so different from staycations or just when mm -hmm. I have a weekend at home. And I think part of it is we remove ourselves from our typical environment and we can get a new perspective on things. And so this is that concept, remove yourself from so much of your typical way of living and, and environment and maybe even what you wear to gain a new perspective. There's often realizations that can come along with that process. Mm -hmm. Second reason to build a capsule wardrobe is that it reduces decision fatigue. I'm sure that this is a concept that you've heard about before, but it's really this idea that if we eliminate the number of decisions that we make, we can think more clearly and we have capacity to make the, the bigger, more important decisions. Um, that if, if we're not needing to choose every single morning between 50 different outfits, we will probably be able to better parent. We will be able to <laughs> better um, work in our environment, at, at our careers, at our jobs. Uh, this isn't the only thing. We're not saying only if you clear out your clothing, but this kind of mentality where we kind of eliminate decisions that don't really matter to create space for the rest of things. And I think mm -hmm. this is particularly a problem that we face um, in in the North as, as Americans or as people who are com comparatively to the rest of the world wealthy, uh, we have so much, we have so much excess. So, I mean, first of all, it's a privilege to even say, how are we going to pare down our wardrobes? Holy smokes. What a problem to have that we have so many clothing that we've got to figure out how to make our lives more simple. Mm -hmm. But I do think that we can reap a lot of benefits if we can simplify so much. It's part of why I love Aldi and, and I, I, it's overwhelming to me to go into regular grocery stores mm -hmm. now to realize, oh my word, I don't need 25 different choices on peanut butter. It's it, like I realize that I've now been conditioned to have one or two options. And I like mm -hmm. that. And it does create space and freedom. And it takes less time to shop at Aldi 
Anyhow, we're not talking about groceries. Yeah. We're talking about clothing, but similar <laughs> concept that if I've got less clothes in my closet, I, I have less decisions to make on it. Life is simpler and I'm freed up for other things. Yeah, definitely. And and that kind of like bleeds over into the next one is that it creates more space and time for what you love. So fewer decisions you have to make, more time you have for everything else. And when you figure out what matters, that's what you can fill that time with. Less so frustration, less time of being frustrated. Mm-hmm. I've got nothing to wear. Everything's in the laundry or you got to dig through stuff. Holy smokes. Yes. Yeah. So I found that the the article, once we get into the, um, you know, the step by step, it felt to me a lot like meal planning. <laughs> so, Everything goes back to food. Like you, you for, we can't sure. do a capsule wardrobe episode without food. I'm hungry right now. So <laughs> that's maybe why. But so so the first one on uh, her list on step-by-step how to build a capsule wardrobe is to first see. So to take out all of your clothes, your accessories, your jewelry, your shoes, put it all on the bed, get it all in your, um, in your eyesight so that you can easily uh, see and sort. I can't stress this one enough. And I will say I've tried both methods. I've tried the get it all out. Let me see everything. And I've tried the method of just like one drawer at a time. But I feel like when it comes to clothing, you have got to see it all at once because you forget Mm -hmm. what you have and you could be keeping things around that you don't actually need because when you're able to see it all at once, you can see, oh, this is actually how many tank tops I have or how many long Mm -hmm. sleeve shirts or sweaters or scarves or you name it. So so yes, you do have to carve out a good amount of time, particularly depending on how much (laughs) you have. It might not all fit on your bed, let's be honest. You might need to haul all this to your living room or like the largest room of your house but make sure you can see it all I really I I can't encourage that enough yeah I love the the last line it might make you laugh or cry but either way you'll never want to do this again (laughs) yeah so it'll keep you on that trajectory I Uh I'll tell you man yes I got to a bad point where things were just shoved and it was overwhelming to see how much I had and yeah not doing that again yep Okay, so now that it's all laid out and you've got it sprawled everywhere and you feel incredibly overwhelmed, you got to get to work. And number two is sort. So you're going to want to move the clothes to different piles. And these are the four different piles that you want to make. Love. (laughs) That one's easy. Like, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. It fits me well. I wear it often. My goodness, like, don't have me depart from, like, my second born. Two, second pile is maybe like I I think I want to keep this I don't quite know why I'm not quite ready to make a full decision on this so like possibly I'll come back to it third pile is donate this just doesn't fit my body or my life I never wear it I haven't worn it in a year we're gonna donate this and lastly is trash I will say repurpose if possible. I hate seeing clothing go to the the dump. But I mean, if we're talking like undies that should have never been in your closet for five years. Yeah. Um, but if it's possible to make it into rags or if it if it can go to a friend or something like that. But yeah, that could be a whole another pile. But mm-hmm. mostly we're talking love it, maybe donate and keep going. Uh, until you have gone through your entire pile. Uh, Yeah, she says, roll around on your bed, get your feet up in the air, scream, drink water, eat snacks, but don't stop. Like, this is why you've got to carve out the time because otherwise then you're just going to be stuck with a trash pile that just keeps getting moved around and then you sleep Mm -hmm. there and then it never ends and then you get tired of it and then you shove it back all in your closet again. So, no, that's not happening this (laughs) time. We're doing it all at once. You can see we're like speaking from like things that have actually <laughs> happened in our lives. This is like how I talk to myself when I'm doing this. And then you need to get the items that you're planning on on getting rid of, on donating out of your house, like immediately. Yes. That like that day 
if possible, even if that means it's moving to the garage or it's moving into your car. But we want to avoid the time when you get so tired of seeing the piles that you just throw it back into your closet. Don't waste all the hard work that you've done. Yeah, I always put it straight into my car. Like I don't even let it sit in my house. So that way it's there. And I can just when I'm by a thrift store, I just drop it off. It's already there. But once you've done your initial sweep, go back through again. So now look at what is in my love pile, what's in my maybe pile, and see, okay, are these items that I do still want to keep? Or is it still so much that I should go back through my maybe pile, compare it to what I have in my love pile? Do I have similar items already that that what was in my maybe I now can toss? Because now you've even got fresh eyes on things. You're probably so frustrated that you can (laughs) run off of that motivation to be like, you know what? We're just, we're, we're tossing stuff. I'm not doing this anymore. Get rid of the weight. Or maybe you want to take, you want to sleep in your bed and then the next morning yeah. take a re look at yeah. your love and maybe worst case scenario, you can put your maybe not even worst case. This is a great step that you can do. You can put your maybe pile into plastic bins and put that into your garage or your attic or under your bed and sit on it for a little bit. But definitely Mm -hmm. don't keep your donate and trash piles. Those have got to get out of the house. Otherwise, you'll change your mind. Exactly. Um, And then the next step is choose. So she's specifically talking about choosing 33 items um, by category. So and this is across. This isn't in each category. This is just across all the categories. And most people say 30 to 40 items is a capsule wardrobe. That's not hard and fast. You you choose. There's no number. The number is not important. The important thing is that you are being intentional with your choices. Mm-hmm. Um, so she has a, a list of different things, and we'll go into that in the next one, but it's like you have to sh- choose like jeans, dresses, skirts, like make sure you have a variety of, of things you wear. Like she also has like button down shirts and blazers. I am not going, I don't own a blazer. I'm not going to get a blazer. I don't wear blazers. I work at home. (laughs) I'm wearing my pajama shorts right now. So I mean, that's this, what people, what are on people's list is not going to be the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. So be intentional. If you live in a climate that is very radical in seasons, then <laughs> what a kind you... strength based way of describing that. <laughs> <laughs> then thank you. I mean, then you'll have to go with uh, separate capsules. So you'll need a winter capsule and a summer capsule and, you know, et cetera. Um, but first, so for me, we have two seasons. We have hot and not hot. And so I have hot and hotter. <laughs> yeah, hot and hotter. So I have uh, I, I used to have two like wardrobes, but then I did the KonMari um, cleaning and now I just have one. I don't even have separates, um, but that's kind of getting a little out of control. So I'm going to have to like redo. But so it just it's based on your lifestyle and where you live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's a good point. You do have to edit. It's not like, oh, I've arrived. Sometimes clothing gets worn out or it doesn't fit anymore. Or we, we change careers or we're doing something different with our lives or COVID hits and suddenly it's sweatpants and we don't need blazers anymore. So yes, (laughs) it can shift throughout life. But the goal of this is for us, at least, is to approach this category or of our lives in a frugal way. You can Mm -hmm. do a capsule wardrobe and spend a ton of money. So it's not as if this is always going to be the most frugal way of doing something. You know, some people will will do capsule wardrobe and every single season change out what their capsule is. And they buy the most expensive pants and the most expensive coats and all this stuff. So there, yes, there's all different types of approaches. The way that, that, I do it. And I think we are suggesting for our frugal friends is that this can be a way towards frugality and Mm -hmm. that we can use what's in our closets already to keep us from spending more and more every time we go to the store, but to say, you know what, how do we aim at contentment with what's in our closet, but also make sure that what's in our closet we like and we wear and it suits our purposes so that we can be content with what we have. 
And, exactly. And I think you're describing some barriers too. Like, and I think that's worth talking about. Like, w- what would keep people from doing this? And I think one of them, first of all, it's the seasonal thing that you've already mentioned. And so there you go. If you live in a place that has, how did you describe it? Uh, dra- drastic changes in uh, yeah, climate. Even, ex- extremes. Uh, yeah. Like- so, yeah. yes, have different capsule wardrobes. Like, you don't have to do it the same as someone living in San Diego who is, like, always in 70-degree weather. It looks different yeah. for you. Also, there's this question of, oh, my word, you're going to take it all away from me. Like, all of my clothes, I've got to give it all up. No, no. We're saying, let's get rid of the things that we don't like anyways, that cause clutter, that Mm -hmm. we don't wear, doesn't suit our purposes, so that we can see what we actually wear, so that we can reduce decision fatigue, and so that we have space for more in our lives. It doesn't have to be 33 items. It can be if you like that challenge. But pairing down to the essentials. Mm -hmm. And no, you don't have to give it up. Again, like I said, if you've got your maybe pile and you're like uncertain, what if I do end up wanting to wear this? Put it in a bin, put it away, but get it out of sight and start to feel what it's like to live with less. Yeah. And even if you have a capsule wardrobe, that doesn't mean that you are not allowed to go shopping. Yeah. You know, you can still, if that's something that if you there's something you need or if you just want to go shopping if that is something you enjoy and you've put it in your budget mm-hmm. you don't have to stop just cuz you have a capsule wardrobe yeah oh, you can add things to you, it and then re you know redo it every season or year yeah you can add things or even and and take things away rule that i made for myself once I felt like I got to a point where all right my closet is at its max and where I want it to be so I can still like see everything all at once and I don't have to like have really strong muscles to like dig through my closet and get dressed in the morning (laughs) Uh, although I do want strong muscles (laughs) but not for that reason (laughs) I made a rule for myself that if I bring something else in I've got to get rid of something So Mm -hmm. if I do want to go to the thrift store and get like crazy good deals, because that just like revives me for whatever reason, then when I bring home a shirt, I've got to get rid of a shirt. If I bring home a pair of pants, I've got to get rid of a pair of pants. And so it's made me more intentional with my purchases and made me question, do I really need this? Is this better than what I already have? Will this last me longer than what I already have? Is this an upgrade from that other shirt that I typically wear? Those kinds of things. And yeah, it has created just greater intentionality with my spending. Mm -hmm. Good word. And so I think that can lead us to our next article, uh, which is 10 capsule wardrobe essentials. So like, what should you have? And I have seen a lot of lists Mm -hmm. and a lot of people have a lot of different opinions. And I think it's like the people that write these are more like fashion-y So they have maybe Mm -hmm. a bigger, they wear more types of clothing uh, than I would. So (laughs) these 10 actually are an expansion of what What (laughs) my wardrobe includes. (laughs) Yeah, I think Courtney had 13 and this one has 10. Yeah. And it's still an expansion. But we'll go through it. And like Jen said, mm-hmm. though, this is still not, this does not have to be exactly what your closet looks like. There is freedom yeah. in all of this. But to give a guideline or a template for what the experts of capsule wardrobes typically say, here it is. Yes. And this one's from The Blissful Mind. And uh, yeah, so the first one I I this I ha, I will say first this is my color palette. If you go to this website and see the examples, it's literally all black and then some white and gray and then one denim shirt. Which but it's also all, all black. 
I like as well, but I will say, I think that that's a barrier for people also is that they think like, okay, capsule yeah. wardrobe. So it all has to match. Therefore I'm going to look like I'm in mourning all of the time. And that's not true either. And definitely search the internet for your more funky, fun. You can choose your color palette. I will say it is easier if you're really paring down to choose a color palette where most things match with most things, but mm -hmm. it does not have to be gray, black, and white, unless you yeah. love that, unless you love right. that. Everyone's like, you have to have a little black dress. You don't. Yeah. You don't. Maybe your little black dress is blue mm -hmm. or red. Yeah. Your or all dress, of the colors. Yeah. Your dress can be whatever color you want it to be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be little. It be whatever you want. It doesn't but. have to be little. <laughs> a big old colorful dress. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. So first on this list is tank tops. So, yeah. I mean, like, yes, because you can wear it under shirts, <laughs> over shirt, no, under shirts. Uh, tank tops are just, my shirts right yeah, now. Yeah, just tank tops. It's 100 degrees outside. Right. <laughs> and and tank tops, especially if they are simple, can go with a lot of different things. I wear them a lot with shorts as well as dresses, as well as to work out in so you just can go from morning to noon to night in a tank top. Mm hmm. Yes. And you want to have a variety of colors, including black, white and gray. <laughs> or peach, uh, teal and brown. I know right now. So if you're on the YouTube video, you will see that Jill is wearing pink and flowers and She's got hoop earrings in, and I'm wearing just like a gray t shirt. You've got a cute little bandana in your head. I in do. Your head, well, because your head. <laughs> because my hair is still re like post birth regrowing, it's still a problem. All right, next is a short sleeve tee. So you'll want to have you can have all or one depending on your preference, but V neck, scoop neck, and crew neck. Again, you want to have a variety of colors. Black, white, and gray. <laughs> yes. Or yellow, chartreuse. <laughs> well, that's the same thing. Um, <laughs> what else do I want to say? Orange. Chartreuse is a little green. <laughs> and green. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but those are, yeah. I mean, I'm literally wearing a, a gray scoop neck right now, and it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, I, what am I wearing? Crew neck? Yeah. Um, I think you're in crew. Yeah. yeah. It's a blouse. It's a, it is a blouse and it's an embroidered mm -hmm. blouse and yes. I love it and it works for me and I yeah. wear it with a lot of different things, but yes, I do especially like t-shirts, especially your plain tees because they can go from very casual to a bit more professional depending mm -hmm. on what you pair it with. If you do pair it with a nice cardigan or a blazer or, or some dress pants versus putting it with your yoga pants or your shorts. So I, I think that particularly some good teas are good. Now, mm -hmm. this is another thing. This does not give us license or permission to go and buy all of these things because we think we need them because a cute blog made them look cool. Uh, you don't need all three of the different types of necks. You don't need all the different colors that they say that you need. Just look for what you already have uh, and pare it down to your favorites. And maybe you would get to the end and say, you know what? I am missing kind of an essential tea or an essential cardigan. Fine. And maybe that replaces like three other things that hardly work. Yeah. But so I will say like, so the next two on the list, um, are long sleeve tees and blouses. Mm -hmm. And so I don't own those. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, really have any reason to wear a blouse. Like I don't do business meetings. The business meetings I do do are with other people in their pajama shorts. And then <laughs> a long sleeve tees, it just doesn't really get that cold here. And so I do own more tank tops and more t-shirts because I don't own these other things. Yeah. So that's another reason to just do yeah. you. Whereas I do, I have like a good amount of my wardrobe is what I can wear professionally um, mm -hmm. when I am with clients or doing training. So 
uh, that that's a good portion of my it's, it's why Jen you see me wearing this shirt that like looks like oh my word you're so dressed up it's so funny because I will get together with people in the evenings and we're like you always look so put together and it's really not that I'm trying it's just that this is my wardrobe I have four shirts I've got three pants I've got a couple of skirts and a couple of dresses and that it, it, it's comfy for me I have found things that are comfortable to me that I really like, but I can wear it both professionally. That just takes me into the evening as well. So it's because I have a capsule wardrobe that I now look put together. And honestly, I don't mind that. Now I'm like, great. I can just be all day in something that I really like. And it looks like people think that like I try, which is nice. <laughs> yes. You're grow- I'm known up. for trying. Whoa. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. Let's, let's breeze through the rest of this list. You've got sweaters, of course, that depends on climate, but having a few typical like sweaters that work for you. Um, They say black dress again, like Jen said, doesn't have to be a black dress. Certainly they can be paired with a lot of different things. Um, You're not in a box with the type of shoes that you need to have and purses and accessories, but a dress. Find a find a mm-hmm. dress or two that you really like and works. Yeah, versatile dress. Um, then we've got cardigan. That's something that I do have uh, a few of because that's, you know, our winters are kind of cardigan winters. Um, but blazers, the next one, don't have them. Don't have any blazers. I actually do have one because I got it from my friend. I will say that, but it's kind of, it's a sweater material. So it's just like a fancy sweater. So maybe... You're getting some things that are versatile in that way, like a blazer that's kind of like a sweater. And the final two are jeans or ankle pants, you know, your typical kind of lounge around, but also be able to go out on the weekend. And then they say black skirt. Again, I will argue skirt of some sort. Uh, If you want, if that's your style, if not, then add in a few more pants or jeans. Done. Yeah. That's your list of 10. There is your 10. But for like me, it's still like six. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) T-shirt, pants. Yeah. They they didn't mention shorts, like the different type. Like they didn't mention your loungewear either. So Mm -hmm. I do think sometimes when people talk about how many things are in their capsule, they're they're not including loungewear, pajamas, work clothes grunge clothes like actual kind of like old manual labor clothes so yeah again you got to make it work for you which is also sometimes what I'm wearing throughout the day so you know <laughs> but you know what's not grungy Ooh, and I can always make work for me yes the, the bill, bill of the, the week, week. time for the best minute of your entire week maybe a baby was born and his name is william maybe you paid off your mortgage maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore duck bills buffalo bills bill clinton this is the bill of the week hi jen and jill this is chanel from victoria texas and i was just calling to let you know about my bill of the week um your podcast First off, has really changed my husband and I's marriage where we're becoming more frugal together, and it's been great. Um, in January, we got rid of all of our subscriptions and really haven't noticed a difference except the fact that we're saving almost like $200 a month. So that's really great. Um, I also had the courage from one of your episodes to try to negotiate my rent rate, and I was able to lower it an extra $70, which will be saving us over $800 over the course of this next year. So I hate paying my rent every month, but at least this is the lowest it's ever been. And it all came, it all started because of you guys. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing and stay safe. Bye. Oh my gosh, Chanel. Chanel. Thanks so much for calling in and congratulations. Like things that we just think aren't even possible in slashing our budgets. You negotiated your rent lower. That is so amazing. 
Yes. Oh my gosh. And people say that can't be done. So I hope that people listening will be encouraged by this because yes, it is difficult, Mm -hmm. but I mean, we're hearing it $800 over the next year. What can you do with $800 that you would have just been giving to your landlord? Yeah. Yes. Not to mention all the other money that you've saved from cutting subscriptions. You've already saved $200 a month, but you're just finding money. Well done. It's so wonderful. Chanel. Uh Today's bill is brought to you by Every Plate. We are so excited that Every Plate wants to sponsor the show because we love a good meal box and Every Plate is America's best value meal kit. So you know we'd start with the most affordable one. (laughs) Of course. Uh, So one of the ways that I love using Every Plate is when I go on vacation. I mean, you all know me. I, I struggle so much with food and meal planning and prep and all of that. So Every plate's recipes come with everything already pre-measured. Thank you. That cuts out a ton of time. So I don't buy a whole bunch of stuff at the grocery store that eventually goes to waste. And then every meal comes together in about 30 minutes. So it's definitely faster than even a grocery trip to the store or starting a meal from scratch. Yes. And if you plan out your schedule for the month or quarter, you can more easily see times when you might not have time to cook. Uh, so that you can pass that task on to your spouse or your adult children. The every plate meals are really easy to cook. And so that just ensures dinner won't be pizza three nights in a row. (laughs) Though that sounds good too, though. (laughs) I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do that. And every plate uses simpler ingredients than other boxes. So it makes it more affordable, but also recreatable. So it's like a cooking lesson in a box. Like you get to do it once uh, and then then you can have the recipe if you ever want to recreate it on your own in the future. I made balsamic glazed pork chops. You guys, I'm not a chef for the first time and they were so good. Uh, So definitely a recipe that I will be adding to a rotation for myself. Yeah. So we'll stop gushing. You can get three weeks of every plate meals uh, for only $2.99 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code frugal3 at checkout. So think of it this way. One meal is literally the same price as a cup of coffee. So that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Again, everyplate.com, and the code is frugal3, number three. Mm. If you want to submit your bill of the week to us, please visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. Leave us your bill so that we can also be excited with you. So excited. Ah! Now it's time <laughs> for the next most exciting. The lightning, lightning round. round. So Jill and I are going to go uh, round robin and we're going to talk about. So what you always wear and what you never wear. But people say that you should. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yes. What do you got? I think I've been really vocal about it so far. <laughs> I guess we we could probably guess what Jen always yeah. wears. So Jill, so why don't you start out then? Okay. Jill? So things that people say you should have in a capsule wardrobe and that I agree with or that I do always wear, like cardigans and scarves are pretty standard for me and it really doesn't matter the season. Uh winter, winter, spring, summer, a fall. Mm. There you go. <laughs> That's my. You're just gonna get singing somehow every episode. That is all that we're allowed to play, like sing <laughs> yes. of that song. Yeah, otherwise know. it's gonna sound too much like the original. So, and I have my winter scarves and my summer scarves. I've got my more sheer. I just like them. I feel like it dresses up uh, my outfits. Also, I travel a ton, and I find that scarves are really helpful in case the plane is cold. I mean, granted, 2020, my travel has gone down the tubes <laughs> but, so maybe I could get rid of my scarves nah but they help as like maybe a blanket or you can wrap it around you as a shawl I just feel like they're so versatile and I love them and cardigans holy smokes where would I be without you <laughs> I feel like I'm giving a speech at like the Tonys I don't even know what the Tonys are but to my clothes to cardigans and scarves I don't know what I would be or who I would look like without you doesn't matter the season you're always there for me yes so 
Uh, would you say that scarves might be your signature accessory? Like, what would you say is your signature? A signature? I don't think I'm to that level of fashion to say that I've got a no, signature. No, but like, it's just something that you're always like wearing, I'm, like it's your go-to. Yeah, sure. Yes. It, it, maybe that most people don't wear all of the time. I'm not wearing a scarf right now, but yeah, it's, it's a staple for me and maybe something that, that sets, it doesn't set me apart. People wear scarves. I like hats too. I don't have okay. a ton of them, but I wear scarves more. Sure. Sure. Jen, for the sake of this conversation. Yes. And <laughs> Okay, I would say my signature accessory would be pearl earrings. Mm. They are really my go-to. I don't wear a lot of jewelry besides my wedding rings and my pearl earrings. That's kind of my go-to, my safe space, because they go with everything. They look great on you. Thank you. And I would love to wear, like, I used to wear a lot of hoops. I used to be much more adventurous with my fashion. (laughs) Um, and then you had a baby. Now I I don't go out much. (laughs) So that's, that I think would be my signature. Um, and also athletic wear Uh (laughs) that is because I work out three to four days a week. And so I just figure I'll just wear what I'm going to work out in during the day too, because nobody sees me. So that's the difference though, between you and I feel like most of the rest of people, that, <laughs> yeah. like people are just wearing athletic yeah. wear as if they're about to work out and it doesn't actually happen. It's different if, oh. yes, I am going to the gym <laughs> and I'm wearing athletic wear versus this is just I'm not, like, you're probably not going to find me working out, but this is what oh, I Oh, I thought you meant like, other people don't stay in their house all day oh, no. like me. What's the difference between you and other people? Like other people go outside. <laughs> no, no. no. Okay. I, yeah. I was giving you a compliment about you Thank working you. out, but yes. Thank you. So, so something that yeah. I feel is always on these lists of capsule wardrobes that just confuse me. I mean, it's not that I don't wear these things, but I also don't feel like they should count in the overall number of items that you have. And first of all, jewelry. Now, I don't wear a ton of jewelry, and I have crossed over to saying I pretty much want my jewelry to be real because I do want to pare down. I don't want to have a ton of costume jewelry. So I ha- I am beginning to make Make the crossover into everything that I wear being real jewelry, real gold, real gems, real silver, so that it can last and it doesn't like give me infections because been there, done that, <laughs> and I'm not 17 anymore. Uh, and so I, I do typically like I want to wear my necklace in the pool, in the shower, wherever. And so yes. However, I don't count that. Like if it's just constantly on my body, I'm not counting jewelry. And also sunglasses, what? They're just essential. Sunglasses yeah. are are not a part of your capsule wardrobe. Like you just you need to have sunglasses. Your Protect eyes need them. your eyes. That's not that's not a capsule thing. That in my opinion. Yeah. Um, I also agree with the jewelry thing. And then also heels <laughs> are not in my capsule wardrobe. Uh, because I have some heels that I got uh, from a friend, and actually I will have to wear them in her wedding. Uh, but I, other than that, like skinny heels, like real heels, I why, why? Because they make you look good. I don't know. People think no. that they make their legs look good, and then you, and then it makes you taller. But you don't need that. I don't need to be taller. So that's probably just a thing from my height. Like I've always been taller, so I've never worn heels. So that is a thing. I did go through a short phase where I bought some like wedges uh, because I was like single and bitter. And I was like, I'm going to be taller than everyone. (laughs) I'm going to tower above them and be better. That was an unhealthy period in my life. Wow. But I got out of it. Good. Yeah. Well, that's it. That's all. That's all we have to say about that. So thanks so much for listening. And uh, we want to thank you for your kind reviews also, like this one on Apple Podcasts. And it's from Boo Junior 85. 
And they say, finally, a friend's hang with benefits. You know, I like that. (laughs) Hang out with your relatable friends that weave in real life experiences and tell it like it is. I always leave the podcast motivated and more grounded about what to do financially, but without being overwhelmed that I'm not doing enough. Great witty banter, positive self-talk, and inspiring a must-listen to. Great way to spend a car ride, listen to while making dinner for the millionth time, (laughs) or just for fun. Literally, this is it. This This is is what we're here for. Oh, and, I f- and this lets us know we're doing it. I feel you, Boo Junior 85, on the <laughs> making dinner for the millionth time. Yes, it just boom. doesn't stop. Uh, well, we also want to thank our friends who are sharing these episodes on social media. And when you share yes. the latest episode, the latest, and you tag us mm-hmm. on Facebook or Instagram, we're going to add you to our monthly drawing. So for every five tags and reviews we get each month, we give away one $10 Amazon gift card. Who couldn't use that? Yes. And this is especially important now um, because now the money we get from that mid episode sponsor is directly related to how many people listen to that particular episode. So we would love for you to share these episodes on social <laughs> yeah. and, and we get more money. That's how and that And then we're helps. just going to so, keep coming at you. Yeah. The more money and we, we are get. rewarding. We're rewarding everyone who reviews and shares uh, by giving away $10 Amazon gift cards for every five tags and shares. So keep leaving us those reviews on iTunes or Stitcher, sending the screenshot to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to tag us on social. Bye. 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 Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Um, what do you think your wardrobe is missing? Is there anything that you feel like, oh, I, I don't have this thing and I should probably get it? Um, yeah, well, it comes down to like, I have it, but I don't fit into it right now, which is such a, a crappy feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but like definitely some good jean shorts Mm. um so i have i got some comfy shorts um which are great and i wear them that's all i wear now like you cannot wear jeans in the summer here so so that's where i'm at but the pair of denim shorts i have is kind of crappy so and i have a good pair of denim shorts that i love they're just too tight right now so that's that's it Mm -hmm. So, like, even if you work out three to four times a week, sometimes when you're eating, like, endless garlic knots, Ugh. it's still hard to fit into your clothes. I love garlic knots. I know. It's like I have this weird, uh, so off topic, but, like, I have this weird, you know, I want to take advantage of working out and, like, be able to lose weight. But then I also want to eat garlic knots. And it feels like you earn it. So like, what it do you do? When you work out, it feels like, oh, I put in all this work. So Yeah, but then I just stay the same way I think, every time. I think you've got to do it for, like, go hard for a while, get to what you want to do, and then you can maintain it. At least that's my thought with it. Like, I, well, once you I get believe to you. that it's point, just, then you can work out yeah. to be able to, like, have a few treats here and there. Yeah, I'm getting there. I figured I I lived this way with spending for, you know, so long. I should be able to go a few months. Without garlic knots. Of, without garlic knots. Yeah. And to be honest, I can't remember the last time I had a garlic knot, but they just are so good. When I order garlic knots, I ask for extra garlic and oil. Ooh. Mm-hmm. That's my signature. You want to talk about my signature? (laughs) That's that's it. Extra garlic and oil. (laughs) (laughs) Extra garlic and oil. Yeah, because I haven't seen you wear a lot of scarves, uh, but I have seen you with a lot of garlic and oil. (laughs) My signature is not about clothing. It is all about food. Oh, man, I hate thinking about it and planning for it and doing it, but boy, do I like to eat. Mm. Yes. 
Did you want to share your what your is missing, or should we end it there? I don't have to. We can end it there. Okay. The end. Cut. <laughs>